Hello everybody, a heartfelt welcome to all my fellow engineers. Uh, my name is Mihir Patel. Today we are going to have a webinar on pumps and their design in the chemical process industry part 1. Now, because it is a volume, I will give a brief introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Mihir Patel. I am a chemical engineer with a master's degree. Uh, also a PMP as well as a TV school certified functional safety professional. I have more than 35 years experience in the CPI. Uh, I had the good fortune to tutor and mentor many process engineers and with the grace of God I have been able to author Mir's handbook of chemical process engineering. I have also worked in many premium consultancy firms. Now because of the volume of this topic, so I have decided to break it into two parts so that the participating engineers can view each part at their own convenience without necessarily sitting for a very long time. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, the topic itself is a very voluminous topic. So we will now start with part 1, where we are going to look at uh, introduction, overall pump types, pump codes and standards and centrifugal pumps. The possible displacement pumps will be covered separately in a part 2. Now we will start the, uh, with the introduction. Uh, back to basics, uh, the participating engineer should be familiar with the following need for transporting various fluids in CPI, definition of a pump and process fluid properties like viscosity, density. Uh, the learning objectives are pumps and their types in the CPI, hydraulic calculations for pumping systems, specification of pumps and technical bed evaluations. Overall pump types we will review now. Now as can be seen, the overall pump types you have pumps on the left hand side we go into the dynamic type which are centrifugal, uh, axial flow, mixed flow, radial flow, then you have the peripheral types are there, then the special effect pumps, jet pumps, gas lift pumps, hydraulic ram, electromagnetic and on the right you have the positive displacement pump where you have the recipro reciprocating piston plunger, diaphragm, then blow case, and rotary, as well as single multiple rotor. Blow case is nothing but a pressure vessel basically. So in which uh, you can uh, pressurize, close the pressure, uh, transfer the liquid under pressure. When the pressure becomes less, again close the transfer, again pressurize. So it's a blow case basically. Now uh, uh, the positive displacement pump, they operate by forcing a fixed volume of fluid from the inlet pressure section of the pump into the discharge zone of the pump. They add energy directly to a movable boundary which imparts the energy to the fluid. Now kinetic pumps, they add energy directly through a rotating part in the form of velocity and convert the velocity pressure. So you have centrifugal pumps, regenerative pumps under the kinetic category. Regenerative pumps are unique pumps where the impeller is the only moving part. It is used when high head and low flows are required. Now as can be seen there are many types of pumps, majority divided into dynamic and displacement types. Each pump has a specific application area which we shall see in the webinar. However, centrifugal pumps occupy a major chunk of pumps used in the industry. So more than 70-80% uh, of pumps are centrifugal pumps used in the industry. Now here we look at the overall pump types again. So as can be seen, you have on the left hand side, left hand side you have the kinetic pumps which are centrifugal, positive displacement, RSF, reciprocating type which have the piston plunger diaphragm within. And the rotary are many types, gear, screw, low, vane, flexible chamber, flexible, peristaltic, then under the special category, you have the progressive cavity also, which can be classified in the rotary category also. It's a special type of pump, I'll be explaining that. And you have the other pumps. Now the specification of process pumps involves a step-by-step -step approach. The process engineer must select a pump with the best efficiency for the full range of process operating conditions. The major types of pumps available are listed in the table. 
progressive cavity pump, although listed under special in slide, comes under positive displacement rotary type pump. So here we see the coverage of the different types of pumps. So here is the head and feet of liquid and capacity in gallon per minute. So the pump cover coverage chart based on normal ranges of operation of commercially available types. Solid lines use the left ordinate head scale, broken lines use right ordinate pressure scale. Okay. So for the solid lines use the left ordinate. So now we are, here we are looking at in the lower range of capacity and the high pressure you can see high pressure category you have the metering diaphragm pumps metering plunger pumps where you need to refer to the right ordinate for the PSI so very high PSI you can see here then for the centrifugal pumps basically you have in the middle of the range multi stage centrifugal also is there and then you have the again the gear pumps which are having higher capacity and you can go up to high pressures also in this case. Then the axial flow pumps here you can see very low head pumps and very high capacities. Now with reference to the slide we should note the following salient points. Metering PD pumps occupy lower capacity range high head as can be seen here. Centrifugal multi-stage pumps can reach far more head than single stage pumps. So these are centrifugal multi-stage pumps. The head is can be far higher than the single stage centrifugal pumps here. Then the centrifugal double suction pumps have far more capacity than centrifugal single suction pumps. So these are the centrifugal double suction pumps here. Have far more capacity than the single stage pumps here. Single suction. Axial flow pumps have very high capacity but are low head as you can see here, axial flow pumps. And also to be noted that PD pumps like metering pumps, plunger pumps have pressure at discharge specified and not head like centrifugal pumps. So here for example as we mentioned the metering diaphragm pumps, metering plunger pumps, screw pumps, one has to see the right hand. So the pressure is specified in PSI here and not head as in feet of liquid like the centrifugal pumps. Now difference between dynamic and positive displacement pumps. So here one can see the definition positive displacement dynamic. So increases pressure by operating on a fixed volume in a confined space positive displacement. Dynamic is increases pressure by using rotary blades to increase fluid velocity. Types in the positive displacement are screw, gear, reciprocating, progressive gravity. Now the characteristics here is important for the PD. You have constant volume, variable differential head, relatively insensitive to liquid properties, relatively insensitive to system changes, and not self-limiting. So the characteristic curve is very typical here. The differential head is there. The flow is there, it's a straight of curve, straight vertical line basically. Whereas for the dynamic centrifugal pumps, your centrifugal and axial pumps, there's variable volume, constant differential head, sensitive to liquid properties and sensitive to system changes, and self-limiting. So this is a typical curve, this is the design point on that curve. Now the major salient points to be noted in this are that PD pumps are constant volume, centrifugal are constant head. Okay, this is important. PD pumps are relatively insensitive to liquid properties, and centrifugal pumps are sensitive to liquid properties. So this is the salient points to be noted. Now, few important factors affecting selection of pump. You have capacity, total head to be developed, physical chemical properties of fluid. Now this is the summarized table for selection of pump from various types. If you have high flow low head, you can go with centrifugal type. Medium flow medium head, you can go with a rotary type. Low flow high head, you can go with reciprocating or diaphragm for a sundine centrifugal pump. 
Now sometimes centrifugal pumps are a special type suitable for low flow, high head domain. They operate at a very high speed. Maybe you are talking about 12,000, 15,000 RPM. Okay, very high speed. Then metering small flows less than 5 meter cube per hour. One can go with a plunger type. Now, a selection table showing the physical range of head and capacity suitable for various types of pump is provided in Mayer's handbook, chapter 3, page 12, which we will now refer to. Here one can see table 3.4, pump selection table. We have the pump type here on the left. Okay. So you have in the low capacity and you have the capacity meter cube per hour here, minimum, maximum and head in meters or feet, capacity in meter cube per hour or US GPM in brackets. So in the low capacity we have peripheral, okay. we can see the meter cubes, very small pumps, head is 213-213 meter which is about 21 bars. Then you have vein pumps and reciprocating plunger pumps. Then plunger pumps as can be seen very high head. Okay. Basically it's a PD pump. Then general use reciprocating power. Direct, centrifugal, single stage, two stage, multi stage. Here you can see the flow rate is quite high. Single stage can go up to 1820. Two stage can also go up to 1820 meter cube per hour and multi stage okay, with very high pressures. In multi stage, you can see very high pressures here. Then, high capacity centrifugal single stage one can see here low head and mixed flow pumps. We'll go back to the presentation again.